Hi guys, it's uh, me again, Fly With Me FBV, and uh, what I have here is an F4 uh, flight controller. And uh, I got this uh, flight controller from um, SM Hobbies. So anyways, that's the box, and there you go. I already installed it. It's not in the box anymore. Uh, again, I got that uh, this flight controller for SN Hobbies. This is an F4 uh, flight controller with a MPU 6000 uh, gyro uh, and then running on uh, SPI bus. So the other version is, or the other uh, option would be I2C, but I, I think very seldom, uh, you know, we don't see that much often anymore because it's a slower uh, bus so again this is running an MPU 6000 and it's an F4 uh, flight controller now uh, it's kind of hard to get the wiring diagram of this because there's different versions out there um, you might end up looking at an omnibus F4 if you're googling the wiring diagram I will uh, include the wiring diagram that I followed, the link to the wiring diagram that I followed uh, and used to get familiar, you know, with the, with the board, the pinouts and where do I connect stuff. So I'll uh, go through the pins. Uh, first of all, I don't want to take it out because it's already soldered and bolted. This uh, flight controller has some sort of a voltage regulator. Uh, underneath or a uh, voltage uh, step down transformer whatever you want to call it but basically what it does is that if you're running if you want to run VBAT and I think you're going to be using that for telemetry or whatever yeah, you have the solder is somewhere here one of the pins here the positive and the negative straight from the uh, power leads you put it there and it basically provides 5 volts on this rail and other parts of or other pins here on this side. Uh, you could you could do that, or uh, what I did was to basically connect a, a wire, positive and negative, to my PDB. There's a PDB underneath, which has a five volt out. Uh, I could have done that, but I don't use uh, telemetry. I don't really need VBAT for for this build. So to power this side and my uh, my XSR receiver, I uh, I did that. So again, five volts from my uh, from my PDB straight to the pins here, positive and negative. Now, this part might be confusing as well. In some documentation or some online reference, uh, you might see that there's a like a diode here or like that you might need to solder or to uh, short, I think it's R18 or R19. Now, for this specific board, you don't have to do that. I'm running SBUS on an XSR receiver. I have an XSR receiver, which is SBUS, sorry. And I just soldered the, the white, which is the signal, positive middle, and then negative. Uh, powered the, the thing, the board lit up like a Christmas tree, and I just bound my uh, receiver to my transmitter, and that's it. If I'm gonna go this route, I would probably be just using uh, an all-in-one or a, they call it AIO boards without a PDB, OSD, and a flight controller all-in-one. But for this one, uh, you know, I just want to run a, an F4 flight controller. Now, uh, this flight controller. Oh, by the way, when you solder it here, you will be uh, using your one in the beta flight configurator there's also i mentioned that because in some uh references in forums they they said you are three or whatever you are but in this case uh it's you are one now if you're any ppm you don't really need to short anything just solder ppm that's from what i read that's how you do it uh yeah what else uh yeah, it's a very cost-effective board, and that's why, you know, I got interested in it, and uh, you know, I installed it on this uh, 130 millimeter uh, frame that I'm currently uh, currently building. 
There's nothing much to uh, really say about the board. Uh, it supports pass-through and I will show that uh, later in the video uh, connecting to BL Heli uh, Configurator. I didn't try BL Heli Suite. I haven't really used that program in a while. I've been using BL Heli Configurator and uh, you could uh, individually flash or uh, configure ESCs by plugging your USB uh, your computer to the USB port here. So uh, yeah, that's uh, basically it. I'll go through the Betaflight configurator and uh, the BL Heli uh, configurator. So I got the the board or the quad plugged into my PC uh, through the USB port and uh, connected uh, to Betaflight uh, configurator. Now I mentioned a while ago about VBAT if you got the VBAT uh, connected, you will have some input here on, you know, like how your battery voltage and stuff, right? So, um, you know, it's not connected and I'm not using it, so that's why it's like that. So anyway, so let's go through the options here on the left. Uh, but again, you know, if you're building uh, a new quad or a new flight controller, configure it, you know, you'd have to calibrate the accelerometer. I don't have I don't want to go to the details, but you know, click it as long as it's flat. You know, your the desk or whatever you have the quad on, make sure it's not vibrating or whatever. Uh, ports. This is what I mentioned a while ago. See that you are one serial X. That's all you need to do on this uh, configuration page. Now in configuration, um, I'm running multi-shot, and again, I will show you uh, how this board works with pass-through and with BL Heli uh, configurator. Now I use motor stop, I use, you know, these are my my settings, these are basically default, I just changed this 1060, uh, I think this was 1070 uh, as default. Now uh, before we go to the other one I just wanted to show you this, uh, this is very important, if you type version, uh, that is the uh, target and that's the version of uh, Betaflight that uh, is installed here. So it's it's pretty new, February 2021. 20, okay, let's uh, go back to ports. Again, it does that. Whenever you go to CLI, you go back. It just I think reboots. No biggie. Doesn't really bother me. But that's the, how the board reacts. So again, you are one. That's my serial. Uh, that's my receiver, my XSR, configuration, uh, what else? Oh, this is what you need to pay, pay, pay attention to, and you need to turn that on if you're using VBAT. Uh, what else? Receiver. This is what you need to choose if you're running SBUS. I'm um, sorry guys, I don't use Spectrum, so maybe that's what you need to you know, to choose and then choose Spectrum here. But in my case, I'm using SBUS, so I set it at that. Now, it's up to you. There's other, you know, accelerometer. If you are still flying uh, angle or any of those stabilized modes, you need this turned on. If you're just, you know, flying acro rate or air mode or whatever of those modes that uh, don't really need assistance from the flight controller to stabilize it, uh, you can turn that off. Now one of the things that uh, make this board different from the F3 board is you could run AKAK. And uh, that's pretty high. Uh, F3 boards I don't, I think can't do that. And uh, if you notice at the bottom at a standstill, you're only using three percent of the CPU. So if you're more, if you're interested in the settings and what it does, I suggest you go to the YouTube channel of Joshua Bardwell. He is a very good resource for getting more information about this stuff. But again, I'm pretty sure that if you're running an F3 board, you can't run 8K as your gyro update frequency and 8K on your peed loop frequency. Now going down, there's other stuff here that you can enable depending on, like if you want to do block box, yeah, there's another UART available, you could plug in a uh, one of those, uh, you know, black box logger or something. I have one, but I haven't really used it. Uh, you could also use air mode uh, by default, so any of your 
uh, modes that you choose when you get to the modes uh, air mode is enabled by default I don't use that I actually enable air mode uh, on a switch which I will go to and anyways other stuff here now PID tuning uh, this is default I know you some of you guys that might be googling this end up in this uh, watching this video I'm not gonna go through PID, uh, PID tuning there's a lot of resources online that could guide you one of the things that really helped me uh, recently was uh, the, P the PID tuning video of Stinger Swarm he is one of the pilots that uh, on the Rotor Riot uh, channel so he had a video uh, not so long ago which really helped me in tuning or understanding PIDs and rates receiver uh, nothing much here this is basically my default when I created the uh, quad on my Tranus uh, and then I set it up to JR Spectrum mod and it ends up as TAER1234 and uh, you know how to I hope you know how to make sure that this is fully functional before you go flying so I'm not gonna go through that process if you bound it properly this things here the slider should work uh, modes that's basically what I have I used to have angle here on another switch uh, so, uh, you know I use it when I'm landing when I was still kind of learning how to fly rate or acro but now I'm pretty comfortable uh, flying exclusively acro so I just make sure that when I arm it automatically goes on to air mode now if you're gonna follow this uh, guys I would suggest that you need to know what is the proper uh, rotation speed of your uh, motor uh, and it's actually here you see this that's a minimum throttle that's what you know the value that uh, it will use to spin your motors now too high uh, you know might be very catastrophic <laughs> for you if it's too high because once you follow if you do it this way once you arm the motor will start spinning so make sure that uh, you know the right value wherein the motors will just spin enough uh, that it will not you know stop or it will not I don't know what's the right term but it needs to be spinning at a rate that it's not too high and not too low anyways that's my modes uh, motors you need to go through the calibration process when you need to do that go there plug the battery wait for the tones and then pull it down lots of references online this is not the video if you want to learn that black box well you have to enable uh, first but uh, if you are interested in this this is not the right video I'm just showing you what are the one the options that are available here if you are not on expert mode which I'm not gonna go through alright so uh, now we are on BL heli configurator now uh, just uh, make sure that if you launch this your beta flight configurator is not still connected to your board or else when you click connect it won't work so I make sure that uh, BL Heli is closed I click connect you get this screen now this is the time where you plug your battery uh, your to your main um, you know battery connector and you will hear the tones whatever tones you uh, you know configured your uh, ESCs uh, you know to use and then you click read setup now after clicking that you will be presented with this screen now I'm not gonna go to the settings here uh, but if you have a, a specific version of firmware that you installed on your ESCs like for example this is 16.65 tones uh, what it gives you is different tones that uh, you can use when your ESCs initialize you could use uh, Game of Thrones, there's an Imperial March, and there's a few more. Now, you change that by changing the beep strength here. Now, I know for, I think, Imperial March used 91 or something else, but uh, that's how you, you, uh, you configure it. Now, 
these numbers again there's a lot of resources online or in YouTube to uh, set the minimum and maximum uh, this is a setting that's uh, I think default on this uh, ESC I just flashed them and uh, it's 1012 you know some use 1020 and lower this down to 1980 it's up to you uh, this is not the video that will show you you know how to do that and how to find out what is the sweet spot here this is all default by the way uh, my motor timing is a medium I might switch this to medium high depending on the performance of the quad not that, that it will matter or I will see the difference but I'm running 4000 kV 1306 motors so that might uh, be bumped to medium high anyways uh, yeah what I'm trying to show here is that this board the F4 board that I'm you know uh, trying to configure and use for this specific build uh, sports uh, pass-through so you could flash the firmware with uh, whatever version of you know I think this is the latest one I haven't seen anything uh, more recent than 16.65 uh, when you flash firmware yeah, this is uh, the beauty of this ash configurator is that it will show you the actual version of the AC I'm running a Speedix uh, 25 amp and you know it detected that now you could do this or you could select file manually I'm not gonna do that here you could do well it doesn't make sense to flash them individually but if you go to this it will actually ask you after this if you want to flash all ESC's now if you change any setting please do click right setup or else you'll lose everything now if you notice that you could also reverse the motors here before I used to unsolder and solder those three, those three wires that goes to the ESC just to you know make it clean but sometimes I just get too lazy and just reverse it here anyways that's a BL Heli configurator <laughs> Back, 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 back